Hey, Chris, I need you to find me the, the, the gavel slam sound effect so, so I can play that when we're done. I, that would be a good toy for me at the end of the meetings. Um, you got to bring your gavel home. <laughs> yeah. um, once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Village of Bartlett uh, Committee of the Whole meeting for June 19, 2021. I call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to again, please call the roll. Trustee Carbonero. Present. Daney. Present. Gansey. Here. Hopkins. Here. Ranky. Present. Sawanski. Here. President Wallace. Present. Um, thank you, Lorna. And the first item that we have on our agenda is under Community and Economic Development, Chairman Gansey. All right, unmuted now. Our first item is the West Bartlett Road Transportation Corridor Study, and I believe we have the presenters here tonight to give an overview of the study. Yes, that's, uh, that's correct. Um, I, this is Roberta. I'd like to introduce the Fish Transportation Group, uh, Cindy Fish and Tim Doran, and they will present to you their um, existing conditions pre preliminary analysis report and key takeaways and potential strategies. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Cindy. Um, thanks, Paula. The, um, or um, th thanks, Roberta. Yeah, th um, we're happy to be here to, uh, to talk over um, the study, the work that we've done and the recommendations, um, some, some uh, preliminary strategies. Um, just an introduction, um, as Roberta said, I'm Cindy Fish with Fish Transportation Group. Um, Fish Transportation Group has been, uh, we're a multimodal transportation planning firm. Um, we've been in business for over 25 years, have worked on many quarter studies and municipal planning uh, studies. We worked on the previous downtown transit-oriented development study for the Village of Barlet, so you know, we're very familiar. Um, I'm here with Tim, and Tim, if uh, you want to introduce yourself. Uh, good evening, um, President Wallace and um, members of the board. My name is Tim Doran. Um, I am a transportation consultant. I have worked with uh, traffic engineering firms for the last 20 years, uh, including Sam Schwartz, who worked with us on this uh, project. And um, so I, I've got a history of doing corridor studies and individual transportation plans and traffic studies. Um, so I just, I work with Cindy. We've known each other for a long time. And um, we're, we're, I think, a good compliment. And it was a ex really good study, really exciting. Um, and um, thank you for having us here tonight. So just, uh, we, we do have a, a PowerPoint presentation. Um, we just wanna walk through the information. All of the information is in the report that was attached to your um, uh, agenda. Um, so, uh, but we'll walk through it kind of, kind of at a higher level, um, kind of speak more to the, um, to the graphics and the maps that are in there and then um, have a discussion um, at the end regarding kind of the, where we're at and, the, and strategies and the next steps. So just moving on to the study objectives. From early on from our, um, our uh, meeting with the village, um, there were a number of objectives from the village's perspective to complete a planning level assessment of the West Bartlett Road corridor, with a particular focus on the truck traffic, um, to pull together all the relevant information, including collecting new data, um, along with collecting data from some of the past reports like the V3, um, the, the CLOA study that was for the uh, um, uh, Illinois 25 and a number of other um, studies. Uh, we reviewed those. Um, an objective to provide uh, a tool for the village so that they can work and coordinate with the Cook County Department of Highways who has jurisdiction over West Bartlett Road. So it gives them something to, to use. Um, and then specifically to identify and project the volume of truck traffic and understand how the truck traffic impacts the other corridor modes and land uses. So, um, and then after, um, then the, I guess the final um, objective is to pull together some preliminary strategies and recommendations that uh, that the village can start begin to pursue. And just uh, uh, quickly about our methodology, we just we collected a ton of data. We collected 
um, new traffic counts, both um, the turning movement counts, which we did at uh, Munger Naperville and West Barlet Road, 24 hour data, uh, two locations, one on the east end, one on the west end, um, collected the, the uh, historical IDOT traffic volumes, uh, we received crash data from IDOT and from the Village Police Department, speed data, uh, development activities for all of the, the recent and the upcoming um, developments and the, the areas that are still building out, um, and also received data from CMAP, the, um, the, who projects the future traffic volumes based upon the, um, the GOTO 2050 plan. Uh, we compared all the data between all those, those different sources, all the new data, the existing data, compared those together. We, can, we compared the existing conditions to conditions pre-COVID to have a better understanding of, of what it is we're looking at. How has it changed since a year ago um, and where are things at and you know, to help us kind of expect where we might be going. Um, we analyzed all the different uh, truck characteristics as far as volumes and timing and size and routes. Um, and then we, um, we identified the, some key takeaways and moved into developing some potential strategies. So, um, so that was kind of, the, kind of how we got started. I'm going to let Tim kind of take the lead on just really kind of walking through the, the uh, analysis, um, and again, all of this information is in the report. Um, and if you have questions, you know, we, we can, I don't know if, uh, Roberta, if you want to have it like throughout the, the PowerPoint or just kind of wait to the end, but um, certainly all of this information, there's more detail in the report. Hey, um, okay, City, uh, Roberta, by the way, I'm perfectly willing to do a video. I just can't get on there. Is that not normal? Do you I, I, speakers? I'm screen sharing. Can you see my screen? I, I can see the, the PowerPoint. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I'll, I'll come up with T, Tim Dorn. Tim, uh, Tim, hold on one second. I'll promote you to panelist and then you'll be able to share your screen. <laughs> Boy, I haven't even started yet. I've been promoted. That's great. All right, Tim, you should be able to share now. I think. Tim, you're, you gotta unmute. I am now unmuted. Yes. Yeah, I guess I'm not, that's fine. I don't need a picture. I just, sometimes it's nice to see who you're talking to. I can see you, by the way. Um, should I start? Yeah, Tim, why don't you go ahead? Okay, so the first thing we saw out there, uh, to nobody's surprise, so um, you've, you've got a real mix of uses. I mean, certainly with the, 200 pound grill, I call it the Brewster Creek uh, business park to the south along Munger and down all the way to Stearns. And then you have along Naperville, and I heard George talking before, really nice high end residential. So as you travel through the corridor, you have a mix of industrial uses, residential, business parks, truck parking facilities. There's either even a trailer park down there. Um, and there's a school at Naperville Road. I think there's one more school in there, but um, so that's the first thing that struck me was, okay, so you have a mix of all these uses. I'm not telling anything new so far. You all know that. So therefore, when you have all the industrial uses, both on the West End, like Blue Heron Business Park, and, and um, the industrial uses on the East End, uh, most notably uh, Booster Creek, so therein lies the problem. You're mixing trucks, heavy trucks, with cars and residential areas. And I know now at Naperville Road, uh, there's a proposal at Naperville to build more residential, Naperville and West Bartlett on the northeast corner. Uh, significant residential, like over 300 some units. I saw the site plan and, and some commercial too, which would be nice. I mean, that'd be a nice use to have along there, some retail commercial if that gets built. Um, so that was the first thing that struck us. Um, there's four business parks I talked about. And there is also large areas of undeveloped land, and I will also use the word underdeveloped land. 
um, that will transition someday and flip over probably to residential or more high-end industrial uses. So um, we're going to talk about this later a little bit, but yes, those undeveloped and underdeveloped parcels were taken into consideration in the study when we did the total projected traffic volumes. Um, the, but the, the one thing that really jumped out at us, and I think I heard Trusty uh, Reinke, am I saying it correctly, talk earlier, um, is the pedestrian, we'll call it a multi-use path, sidewalks, it's a mix of two. There's a large gap, um, generally from Spitzer going west across the railroad tracks across Brewster Creek, and um, for good reason. <laughs> There's not a lot of available right-of-way there, but I think that's something, you know, we'll talk about that later, but um, that's an important component along with this. There's a lot of gaps that are missing. Roberta, if you could change the next slide. So this was our study area. Um, it essentially is just follows the core. It's in the dark uh, red line and it follows the corridor along, um, right along West Bartlett Road. And then it goes from Illinois 59 on the east to Illinois 25 on the west. Uh, those brown dash lines just show the distance between those major facilities, arterials. Um, and it also shows the truck route. So uh, West Bartlett Road, as you know, is not a truck route. However, it's county owned and it is a heavy truck usage route. Um, Illinois 25 is not either. Uh, US 20 is, uh, 59 is, and Stearns Road are the truck routes. In a couple more slides, we'll tell you what that means, how far trucks can travel to and from truck routes and from interstate facilities and also from arterial roadways. So that's our study area there in the black line. Um, if you could change, Roberta. Okay, so this is the, this is the other thing that struck us. Man, you've got a lot of roadway jurisdictions out there. So blue is IDOT. They own Illinois 25 and 59. And I guess that's Fuchsia. That's Fuchsia, which is county, Cook County. Um, so they own those, uh, those routes there and those facilities. And then uh, DuPage County is in brown at the bottom, and that's Stearns Road. So that's, um, there are some other, there's local streets in there too, and there's some township streets. Um, generally speaking, though, those are the major roadways. So anything, and you know this already, it has to be done, it has to be done um, through uh, Cook County. And I did go back and historically read the uh, traffic study you did for Spalding and Naperville Road and the attempt to get a traffic signal there. And I know Lynn Means very well, she's a terrific engineer. I worked with her at Gualt Hamilton. And um, I saw the detail you went through and the county turned it down. So then we came up with that idea, which we'll talk about in a little while, and hopefully that's a little more palatable to the county. And it'll help, I think, it gives the motorist perceptions of slowing down and, and not speeding through that area. Uh, Roberta, can we go to the next slide, please? Um, we did, as Cindy said, 24-hour uh, traffic items at the east end and at the west end. So the east end's higher. Um, also, the um, total traffic items are about 93% of COVID. Uh, volumes 2018, which was the last counts that were, <coughs> excuse me, done by the state of Illinois. So it's about, yeah, we got a little ways to go. And uh, Cindy, who does a lot of this, uh, and Cindy, you could talk about it if you want. Um, we're seeing that the traffic is kind of coming back in the morning, but not in the evening. Is that right? Uh, right. So a lot of the traffic volumes, the um, actually the truck volumes never dropped as much as the, the the autos did. The autos dropped, as probably everybody knows, probably about half. Um, but the truck volumes never did drop as much. And now the truck volumes are really, I think the, the small trucks, those like the delivery type, type of trucks are, I think they're 15% higher than, than actually pre-COVID, but at the heavier trucks, are just a, a little bit higher. They're pretty out much on par with pre-COVID. But the difference is, is yeah, kind of, the, as Tim was saying, smaller, what's the peaking characteristics? If the smaller trucks have to be FedEx and, and Prime and, and all the local deliveries, right. I mean, intuitively, that's that's got to be the reason. Um, but right. suffice to say that... We're, you know, we're, we're, yeah, because we're shopping differently. Um, you know, everything's being delivered now. So... Um, yeah. The, um, uh, you know, uh, surprisingly, I mean, I guess not surprisingly, but speeds are a little bit higher, you know, when traffic is down, speeds are a little bit higher, but the peaking characteristics are different. So the AM peak really has not recovered like the PM peak. And what we're, what the, the data that I've seen is that generally the tr there's a slight bump in the morning peak, and then it just gradually builds, uh, you know, through the afternoon to the, to the high of the PM peak. So for trucks, 
Illinois 59 is the is the method of or the choice um, of most truckers. It's um, they're about it's about even though the percent of trucks at the east end where we measured on west part of the globe coming ostensibly and going to Illinois 59 are only they're a smaller percentage of daily values about 11 percent. When the west end they're about 14 percent down near Illinois 25. So. Um, but that's the ratio of trucks. And in a second, I'm going to show you a chart and you'll see that the, the kind of peak, truck traffic peaks midday, whereas the AM and PM uh, volumes of truck traffic isn't as much, but it's a kind of a constant distribution all day long. The next slide, please. Here's the 24 hour traffic volumes in here. So um, on the east end, I always need my cheat sheet here. Uh, so the total ADT on the east end is about 15,000 vehicles a day that includes trucks, trucks and, um, and, and autos. And on the west end, it's almost 9,000, 89, 20. Now on the east end, trucks is about 1,600, almost 1,700 trucks a day on the east end. And that would be generally around, just to, at a point where we measured just to the uh, west of Illinois 59. I think the name of this, was it Cheviot? That was the name of the street there where we had our tubes. And on the west end, there's about 1,200 trucks a day. So um, the value, the percentage of trucks near 25 in that industrial corridor down there are higher as a percent, um, but the volumes are lower. Uh, on the east end, the volumes are higher, so it's only about 11% uh, trucks. Uh, we'll get into future truck volumes in a second, because I think that's the key. Um, you know what's out there now. You can see what's going on, what's going to happen in the future, and what can we do about it? Uh, next slide, please. So these are 24 hour volumes compared side by side pre COVID and during the COVID environment. So on the left is um, that's between Illinois 59 and Naperville Road, and that's 2018. On the right is the same section in, uh, in uh, for the counts we did in 2020. You can kind of see, so the gray line is all traffic. Um, the, the bronze line is westbound, so it's bi-directional. So you can see the eastbound and westbound movements are almost the same. So it, it just told us one thing, that people are generally coming in the Illinois 25 entrance and going out the 59 entrance. It appears that they're going, coming and going from the same direction. The next slide, please. Uh, truck regulations. Uh, Cindy, you want to talk about this? I'm sure. I mean, we talked that the uh, showed on the previous slide or one of the previous map about the uh, truck routes being 59, 20, and Stearns Road, and that West Bartlett Road is not as designated truck route. But we did get a lot of a lot of questions. People just wonder, you know, what is allowed? So, you know, the maximum gross weight is 80,000 pounds, um, and trucks traveling on a Class One or Class Two route, which are the two routes that are in the state of Illinois, um, are not allowed to exceed 65 feet. Um, so, Trucks that are on the net, what they call the national network, which is pretty much like the interstate system, the states have to allow a reasonable access for that truck to exit to um, to get food, fuel, repairs, um, arrest facilities. We have a table next if you want to change the yeah, slide. Yeah, the next table. Yeah. Um, there it is. So it, that's, this just shows that uh, um, for trucks that within that uh, overall 65 feet, you know, they generally in through Bartlett can travel five miles um, and the same with um, actually from for trucks that even or over 65 um, they still are allowed to travel um, from one truck route to another truck route you know within that five miles so you know this just shows that um, that the, the trucks do they people don't think that they should be on certain roads but they are actually allowed to do so but for deliveries so I mean you can imagine even in a residential area you're going to get some large trucks moving vans etc they're going to come in there. So for deliveries and for business like that, they're allowed. It's just as a normal course of travel, they're not allowed on those roads. Only within these guidelines from a class one, that's the interstate system. Class one is interstate 90, interstate 80, 88, and so on. So they're allowed one mile from class one. And these are trucks that are over 65. But even the smaller trucks uh, with an overall length of 65 feet, they get five miles from a designated state highway. That would be Illinois 59 or Illinois 25 because they have to go and make their deliveries because there may or may not be truck routes in between. 
So it's a pretty loose, I mean, there's guidelines, um, but it's, it, and there's standards, but it, you know, there is some flexibility there. Uh, next slide, please. These are our truck fires. I talked a little bit about them on the west end and the east end. Um, so no need to go over there. Heavy trucks, three more axles. Look at the bottom row, um, half on the west end, not just less than half, 43%. And on the east end, about two thirds were heavy trucks. And obviously they're going to the industrial areas, the Blue Heron parks, uh, Brewster Creek Park and so on. But we have some ideas on this, folks. We're not just going to throw like a, a big data dump on here, but we thought you'd want to see this stuff so you would understand in the context of what we're recommending. Uh, next slide, please. And this is a 24-hour truck fire. This is trucks, not all vehicles. So you can see how they, so um, this the, on the left is between, it's the west end between Gifford and Southwind. So they peak in the middle of the day. Uh, the different color lines are the directions. So the orange line, I guess, is westbound. The blue line is eastbound. And on the right is showing uh, down at, uh, between Illinois 59 and Naperville Road. So you can see where truck traffic is dispersed. You know, just like when we go to work or when you drive to work, it's peak hours. Everybody always talks peak hours. I, I read the other traffic studies in the region uh, for uh, True North, the gas station, and uh, the V3 study I read for the fill out of Brewster Creek, which has a way to go. Uh, like over 2 million square feet yet to be developed in Brewster Creek. So that, that's, the, especially on that north and east end, there's a lot to be developed. But truck traffic is dispersed. It's a good thing and a bad thing. So you never get rid of it, so to speak. It just, it's around. It's constantly around. So you can see where it could be an irritant, you know, if you live there in the residential areas. Um, at the end, we'll talk more about what can be done, if anything, about truck traffic on West Bartlett Road. Next slide, please. Uh, these, are trust, these are truck classifications. Cindy, you want to talk about this one? Uh, sure. The um, so the, a medium truck is is those uh, delivery trucks like Tim was talking about, like the FedEx or the UPS. Um, they're typically they're trucks with just two axles. Heavy trucks are trucks that have they're the the multi unit, the uh, tractor trailer, those with three or more axles. So we just wanted to have an understanding of of the difference between you know when they say just total truck traffic, there's a big difference between a heavy truck and a medium truck. So what is that? What is how is that made up? And you can see that. Um, how between the the uh, the west end and the and the east end that um, there's a higher percentage of heavy trucks kind of between the illinois on um, closer to 59 showing that there's that those trucks are generally coming from 59 going into the industrial parks but that's the heavier trucks are more on the east end where more of the the smaller medium-sized trucks are are more dominant on the west on the uh, west end so we were thinking, okay, so between 59 and Naperville Road, we're like, oh, how do you get trucks off there? Well, you, the answer is you can't. First of all, it's a county highway. They wouldn't, they wouldn't permit it. It's built for trucks and high volumes of vehicles. Um, it's four lanes. It's divided with the median in the middle. The intersection of Naperville Munger is built out with separate left turn and right turn lanes. So um, at the end, we'll talk a little bit about here's some things we think you can do to get, maybe get them down to Stearns. Um, but you're, I, I don't think it's realistic to think you can prohibit trucks on West Bartlett. I, I don't know if that anybody wanted to do that. Um, so we did, we, just as a sample, as a test, we're like, okay, let's look at Naperville and um, West Bartlett, and let's just do some peak hour counts. And it was interesting because remember we said trucks comprised about 14% of the volumes down near 25 on West Bartlett and all day, and they comprise about 11% on the east end near 59. But when you look at the peak hour, they're only about four or 5% of the total. So when people are going to or from work under normal times, um, the trucks aren't a lot, but as those tables we showed you with the curves on them and the bar, the bell tables, um, the bell graphs, we show you they're dispersed all day long. I guess that's a good thing. You wouldn't want to load them all in the morning or in the evening the downside to it is you get trucks all day long. I was out there today. I drove around again today and uh, was out there around 1130 or 12, right around lunchtime. And um, it wasn't overwhelming, um, but 
uh, um, there were trucks out there. So I, I'm thinking that it probably is a good thing that they're dispersed. But we have an idea at the end that maybe could push them further south to Stearns Road. So look, would we go to the next slide, please? Oh, this is just shows what I just talked about. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this crash data we got from IDOT and from your police department. Thank you for your cooperation, uh, Chief. And um, it didn't show us anything striking other than most accidents happen at the major intersections. Um, the good news, I, <laughs> the good news is, you know, 59 West Bartlett, as all of you know, uh, there's a they're going to there's a contract letting in June uh, to really widen it and expand that intersection. Um, that I guess there's always a bad thing with a good thing. It's going to make it more attractive to everybody. It's going to make it more attractive for trucks to use it too, because now the turn lanes will be widened. Um, I think they're putting dual left, dual left turn lanes uh, on both the north and south approaches, if I recall from the IDS uh, from IDOT. Um, so that'll that'll be helpful. And you can see on the right side there. That's where I mean that's where most of the traffic is. Uh, Illinois 59 carries a lot of traffic. Uh, so there was nothing that jumped out at us here other than the major intersections are where accidents are. I have a quick question. Yeah. What may, were we just using this data because it's West Bartlett Road? Because just perception wise, there seems like there's a lot of accidents at Naperville and 20, but why would we, why did we just choose this strip and not some of the other like areas coming down? just because it was focused on West Bartlett or? Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. The answer to that is yes. That was our that was our study area that we were charged with studying. Um, I don't know what goes on at Naperville and West Bartlett. I heard uh, George talking before about how, uh, at least his perception was, there's a lot of speeders up at that end. I think the speed limit drops as you get up there, it's 40 instead of 45 further north on Naperville Road. Uh, but I don't know what the accident um, experience is up there. It's right by Villa Olivia, isn't it? Yeah. Um, don't know. And this we, this was just our study area. This is just what we looked at. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, future development. So um, you can see all the areas that we've shaded there that are still to be built out, including um, I think we're building at 2.2 million square feet approximately in uh, Rooster Creek. Um, yeah. I mean, those are, I drove through there today too, again, for the second time. There's some big, big buildings in there. And um, it's obviously a very successful, very successful business park. Um, and it was interesting to drive around in there. I'm, I'm, I always like to look when I go into industrial parks, how many cars are in the parking lot of these businesses shut down because of COVID? That nah, didn't appear that way. And there's a lot of traffic coming in and out off of Brewster Creek Road Boulevard, I think, which wraps around and kind of aligns in the Spitzer corridor right of way there, but and uh, intersects Munger. But there was a lot of activity going on in there today at noon. So um, it's a good thing. You know, COVID's had a horrible effect on businesses all across the state. And it was nice to see that that was still busy, but there's 2.1 million square feet there. And on the west end, there's some significant uh, spaces that are gonna be developed. Yes, uh, in our future traffic projections, yes, these were included. Uh, they were included by CMAP, Chicago Metropolitan Area for Planning, who works with your staff, with Roberta and your staff, and looks at your plans and looks at the, the buildable area and the per zoning, how it's zoned, and the types of uses, and puts them into a model and project. Um, yes. Um, I know a lot of this is included in our in our report, and you've teased us on uh, solutions at the end. So if we can move closer to the to the tease, I'd really appreciate it. We were going to say that, Paul. Okay, you know, consultants are long winded. Okay, I think we're almost done. So here's yeah, future topic plans. I already told the, explained them to you. They're in your report. Um, there's about a 25 percent increase overall by the year 2050, 2050. Okay, so we can go future traffic. This just shows that table down on the right side shows you what I already talked about uh, at the east end and west end. And then our findings and takeaways. You want to talk about the takeaways, Cindy? I'll talk about the findings. I'm sure. I mean, actually, I mean, it's just there's a, a summary that's um, 
It's on page 25 of the report. Uh, I mean, in most of the sections we had kind of a, a key takeaway section, but you know, that just the key, you know, the key thing is that the, the village does not, uh, they do not manage most of the roadways that are, uh, that are along within the area. And in fact, a lot of the, um, the, there's also land that's Elgin or unincorporated. So there's a lot of things that are outside the municipal boundaries. Um, you know, it's not a truck route, but it's going to continue to carry a lot of trucks. Um, you know, trucks are well dispersed throughout the day. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that's being planned. Um, you know, the, the, um, just the growing need for uh, shipping and the way we shop. And, um, you know, so those are all uh, things that are going to kind of impact mm -hmm. the future of uh, West Barlow Road. And so we go to the next slide, which I think uh, this, these are strategies. We don't have to read this or, um, it, it, Cindy just explained it. Um, strategies are intended to enhance the overall mobility. So the last slide I think is next, which is our, yeah, that's it. So, um, Oh, by the way, if, before I forget, uh, Paula and Roberta, I think it was your engineer, your police chief brought up the gap on Gifford Road to the north that was kind of no man's land up there. It was like county and then there was a white space on the GIS there. It is county. It was an error in their GIS mapping. I talked to the county about it. So that is all county roadway. Okay. So they're just as, the, the strategies, um, they are on, in the report, the report, people want to refer back to that. Um, we, we were going to talk more to the map, but on page, I think it's page 26 or so, but there's, is where we start talking more detail on the strategies, but go ahead, Tim. So the short term and long term. So um, I heard Trustee Reinke, am I saying it correctly, uh, talk about his committee and the gaps in the pedestrian, uh, non-motorized non um facilities throughout the village. And we found the same thing here, which I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but uh, the long-term strategies are um, the West Bartlett Road, not under your control, would have to be coordinated with Cook County, um, but it goes from a really nice four lane divided. And then when you get about a quarter mile to the east of the, the CN railroad tracks, it drops down to two lanes, you go across the creek and then it comes out and then it widens again to the west um, of there around Gifford, just east of Gifford. And then it goes from, it's a single lane each direction, but at least it's divided. And then when you go down further, it goes to two lanes again for a section. So I guess long range work with the county. Um, and I don't think anybody expects you to pay for it, but it would be nice to have a consistent cross section with curb and gutter that goes all the way down because it's soft shoulder. Although I talked to the engineer from Elgin and your engineer, it doesn't appear to be flooding issues down there along the roadway. Um, so I thought maybe it was a, a drainage issue. It's not, we put it in there anyways as a long-term plan. Um, and then on the south side at a street called, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, Schoen, Schoen. Uh, there's a truck parking facility uh, that, uh, your staff had indicated us was problematic and it's in that section of roadway that's only two lanes. Um, in the future, it, that's a long-term thing, a connection from the rear of that, from the south end of that over to Spitzer would be an enhancement and actually clean up that roadway along there and make it right in, right out, maybe with curb and gutter. Again, these are long-term. And then roadway improvements, uh, well, we talked about that, I already talked about that to the west too. Now, the short-term stuff, four, five, six, and seven. Um, the multi-use path. I don't, we don't do it for a living, so I'm not trying to find more work for us, but I, it would probably be beneficial. I've heard through the grapevine that the new administration is gonna look for ways to spend money on non-motorized vehicle enhancements, and maybe this is the time to get in line and have an engineering firm look at what the potential is for extending that path. It doesn't appear to be on the south side. It appears to be on the north side. There appears to be more right of way on the north side. And of course, crossing the rail across the railroad tracks and Brewster Creek is gonna cost money. But I think it's an enhancement that would be, if it's not short term, middle term, at least if you could identify how that path could be crossed at that point and then go down and connect on the south side. So you'd have to cross the roadway because then the sidewalk and the multi-use path, path picks up on the south side uh, over further towards Illinois 25. So now here's the one that um, everybody's gonna love, I hope. I shouldn't say that. Um, I'm 
so Naperville Road, again, I went through all the details that you did on the signal warrant study and Lynn's uh, engineering study. Uh, the county turned it down. But we thought this would be a nice enhancement because those are really nice high-end um, residential homes in there. And we thought, and it's uh, the entrances to those subdivisions are very wide. And um, I think that uh, your staff is working on possible design for a roundabout or an elliptical about. It might not be perfectly round, but it would conform with standards and guidelines. It's a nice visual. It's a traffic calming visual. It does slow traffic down. And if they're done in accordance with FHWA guidelines, uh, they've been proven to be very safe. So we think that would be a wonderful enhancement to Naperville Road, which has a large residential population. Uh, in addition to that, and kind of 1A and 1B, um, we talked to the police chief about this and to the staff, we think a weight limit should be placed on Naperville Road uh, with signage at the front end and the south end. Now, Spalding has a weight limit because as you get to the tracks and cross it, there's an industrial area. So there's 10,000 pounds. I'm sorry? What, what weight what limit would that be there? 10,000. No, what you have is 10,000 pounds going to the west. I think it probably would be a 20,000 pound weight limit. And what size? I'm sorry, I'm not like well versed in like what size. Is that like a normal semi truck or is that something smaller? It would be, no, it wouldn't be a semi truck because uh, as we just talked before, the big semi trucks are 65,000 pounds, 60 and 65. So it certainly would allow UPS, FedEx, and those. A garbage trucks, um, certainly you have to do that. And maybe something a little bigger, a box truck, but that would be something you have to work out with the counter, whether it's 15 or 20,000. But no big heavyweight vehicles, unless, as we explained, it's local delivery. And then, how, and then what would you estimate that would bring the traffic down on that road by? Well, uh, we actually- <laughs> well, Are you talking about Naperville Road? Is that yes. what you're talking about, yes. Trustee Gansey? Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, that, I th I'm assuming that circle is the roundabout. I think yes. That's okay. correct. We, we don't have we don't have truck numbers on there. Only peak hour. I've got peak hour truck numbers on there, and they're not much in the peak hour. But as we showed you, trucks are dispersed more in the middle of the day. So I don't know. I have, I have no idea. Okay. And we did that was out of our study area. Okay. Thank you. Um, the last one is signage. So this is a, I think it's a small one. But I think it's an important one. So as you're traveling south on 59, I mean, and I'm a trucker and I'm looking at Waze or some other uh, platform to show me how to get into Brewster Creek. It's probably going to say, turn right at West Bartlett, turn left at Munger. And we think signage there that would say truck route straight ahead, Stearns Road. I think that... I, it's not going to cure everything, but if it reduced the number of trucks on West Bartlett, that's a plus. It's a small thing. It would be in the state of Illinois right of way, so you'd probably have to coordinate with them. But I can't see why, if you are directing trucks to Stearns Road uh, and say, the Stearns Road, half mile ahead, truck route, something like that. Um, it would certainly, I think it would it'd be, these are mitigation factors. They're not all, it's not one stop cure all. Again, you don't own these roads. IDOT does, the county does. So, <coughs> you know, we thought, could we put a weight limit on the north end of Munger and, and make trucks turn to the right and go to the south as they exited their, I think that's clumsy. I don't think the county would go along with it. Um, Munger is a mixture of Cook County and DuPage County. I don't think they'd go along with it because it's built, if you look at it, it's built to industrial capabilities. So they're not going to want to just say no trucks at the north end. So, um, so that's it. It's a lot of data and um, you know some long range and uh, but some short range stuff that I think um, could help. I have a quick question. Um, this is Trustee Hopkins. Is there any way to put price tags on some of the things that uh, you're talking about? Um, just so we kind of have an idea of um, a price range. The answer is yes. Um, that the, putting up the uh, the roundabout um, would be a simpler um, cost estimation, but the roadway improvements would require more complex study, and we don't know what the available right of way is. So, I mean, there used to be an old rule of thumb that when you build a road, 
it's you know $2 million a lane mile, a lane mile. I mean, if it's two lanes, it's $4 million. But um, you can do a cost estimation, and I'll tell you, you could do it is your traffic engineer. Uh, if she comes back with a design, uh, that firm is perfectly capable of uh, cost estimating any of these improvements. Trustee Hopkins, we've got um, uh, Lynn doing the rough geom geogra um, no, it's geometrics um, for the roundabout or an ellipse about, um, and she's working on that right now. Oh, great. All right, thank you, Paula, thank you. I have I mean, a question. Some of like the roundabout, you could, you know, there's like, um, once you get a design, um, could put a cost estimate together and the signage. But like Tim said, some of these like connecting the bike path or some of these roadway improvements, it's they're really not to that level, the engineering type of level to really come up with a good cost estimate. Let me ask a question. This is trustee Ray Dini. Why can't we start with something uh, rel relatively inexpensive like signage? Why won't the county cooperate with us if we were to put up signs? When I first read the uh, traffic report that you did, uh, before we had the presentation, read it earlier in the week, you know, the one thing that jumped out at me were, you know, putting up uh, restrictions for weight limits uh, going down Naperville Road uh, to try and encourage heavy, uh, the, uh, the heavy semi trucks to turn up West Bartlett Road and go, uh, go east to uh, 59th. And what about, <clears throat> that's one question. And the second part of my question is, why can't we just put up signs? No trucks beyond this point. I didn't understand that before. Okay, yeah, Trustee Danny, uh, I think if I hear, I heard two things there. So think about this just logically. Uh, trucks, a trucker that delivers all the time and he comes from the east or the west and he delivers all the time to the Brewster Creek Industrial Park he knows, or she knows, who's ever driving that truck, that Naperville Road is a nice, quick, cut-through way to get down into the park, and I don't have to navigate the busy intersections there at 59 and 20 or 59 and West Bartlett Road. So you're, are you saying put up signs instead of a weight limit? Is that what you're saying? Um no, I think what I think what I heard Ray saying is is the weight limit. Are we allowed? I guess basic basic basically let's make this a little easier. Are we allowed to put a ten ton weight limit on Naperville Road? Not without county permission. There you go. Is is Route twenty five is Route twenty five considered a, uh, a truck route? It's not. No. And why it's not, not? A designated truck what? route. It's a it's a state it's a state route, but it's not a designated truck route. Not a designated truck route. That doesn't make any sense to me as far as why 25, which is would be perfectly capable of handling this traffic up to 20 versus Naperville Road. So yeah. roundabout yeah. seems to make sense to me. Trying to push for a weight limit seems to make sense to me and some extra signage. That's the low hanging fruit right now. I have a question, President Wallace. This is yep. Trustee Sawanski. Are we allowed to limit the, um, the speed limit on Naperville Road? No, no, not without Duck Cook County. Actually, you know, one of the one of our recommendations was uh, maybe setting up this multi-jurisdictional committee, the working group to um, to you know with all the different you saw that map that had all the different roadway jurisdictions, um, just to kind of work on you know what are the preferred routes and what are things that that the that the entities can work together on. Well, and that's the perfect segue to my question. How do we get Cook County to finally pay attention to this problem? It seems Thank like that was my question. Them, also. Owners have, have, have approached them and, and they just don't seem to care. I mean, what do we have to do? I don't understand it either. Why can't we get some cooperation? It seems relatively simple. Just sit down and talk and work it out. We have residents out there that are suffering right now. And a county can't cooperate with the village of Bartlett and do something. It doesn't make any sense to me. Have any of us as just like a single trustee tried to reach out or we have we just had the village reach oh, out? I've, I've been in multiple uh, meetings. Um, but yeah, well, I, I think uh, the collaboration with um, multi-jurisdictional uh, entities is, is a good uh, thing to start. Um, I think a lot of a lot of talk goes on in those and not a lot of action. Thank um, you. And, and so, Mayor, I think you hit the nail on the head. 
having these um, this report, this data, these actionable um, solutions, I think is a is a good way to move the needle. Um, to to when we've gone to them and say, look, you know, we need your help to solve these problems. Um, we don't get a whole lot of traction, but to say we need X, we need Y, this is what we want, this is what it costs, here's what we're going to do, um, you know, I think that is a much stronger conversation. I totally and we have agree. the data to back it up now, too. Yeah. Well, let's, yeah. let's try it. Let's, let's get this thing moving. Yeah. Let's try it. I just, I just want to, um, I know Mr. LeBron had his chance to talk earlier. I just kind of wanted to, since he's, I think he's still on, just kind of double check with him that this Mr. LeBron, does talking about the road rights, the Wait, load limit, yeah. and the roundabout sound, that, that sounds like what he said earlier, right? We've already hit all the topics that he had, um, other than uh, discussing use of TIP funds. So the roundabout, reducing speed limit, we know the answer to that question. Okay, um, good. We have, we have the detailed information right now as far as what is what we're dealing with, um, which we didn't have before. So now we can go and say, hey, there's this is not going to get better, it's going to get worse. What are you going to do about this? These are the things that we would suggest. And, and we'll try, like Paula said, we'll definitely have the ability to move the needle on this and get some action going. Good move. Also, um, Brian, if you just want to um, address using TIF funds, those limits. Um, <clears throat> well, you're talking about the uh, village's 15%, the, the, uh, from Brewster Creek? Well, just the limits that, you know, that we have on where we can use TIF funds and where we can't. Well, the TIF, the, the, okay, the TIF Act limits you to eligible TIF expenditures. And, and those tie into the Brewster Creek TIF. And so to the extent that it's a contributing factor, which it is, but it's not a hundred percent contributing source of this problem. So you can use some of your 15% of the village's TIF funds toward some of these costs, but not all of it because it's not all attributable to Brewster Creek. Thanks, Brian. So, okay, so, so that's that's them definitely some good news then that uh, we can use some TIF funds to correct some of the issues on Naperville Road and some improvements on West Bartley. Mm -hmm. Obviously, yeah. the closer to Brewster Creek you are, yes. Okay. To the extent that we're allowed to. Correct. Okay. But are there are there any funds if for this purpose? Could you ask that again, Aaron? I, I'm sorry. Are there are there sufficient funds left in the TIF for this purpose? There are some, and you know, I, it certainly won't cover the whole project. I would imagine. I mean, we you know don't have real numbers, um, but there are still a few years left in that TIF. Um, so, and you know, we've heard about the developable land that's available there. Is, let me ask, is there enough there if we had to uh, build a roundabout? I don't know at this okay. point, Ray. Okay. Well, that's something that we would push Cook County funding for. But um, I think uh, I think the most, the, the most plausible way forward right now is to take this information, assign some price tags to these items, um, knock out the low-hanging fruit that we, could, we think we can get away with right away with Cook County, which is maybe some signage, um, and then go back to bat and, and see if we can have some meaningful meetings and push some effort uh, by Cook County and some of these other taxing bodies to get some something done for our residents on that uh, on that corridor. So, yeah, is that uh, fair enough, everybody? Is everybody in agreement with that kind of an activity? Yeah, let's move in that direction. Yeah, I yeah, I, the data has been I, good. Sorry, Adam. Go ahead. No, it's okay. I was just going to say um, I, I agree with all that. And if someone from staff could reach out to uh, Mr. LeBron tomorrow and just to kind of outline some of the things and strategies we're going to do to move forward, um, that would be helpful. Thank you. 
Um, can I, I'm not, uh, this is Trustee Sawanski and I'm not, um, I'm not saying that, that I disagree with pushing things over to Stearns Road, but are then we going to get pushback from um, people who are using the parks over there, Tri-County and the, um, there's several parks on the, um, on the south side. I don't think there's any residential going west, but there is, you know, the residential um, to the east. If there is a lot more traffic that's, that's pushed in that direction, just something that we would need to think about if we get pushback from that, those types of situations. Well, the only thing I could say about that is uh, that is a designated truck route and Naperville Road is not. So mm -hmm. consequently, you know, they would have to absorb the- No, uh, the no, ar the no, ar the no argument at all to be had because that's mm -hmm. just the way it is. Yeah, Naperville yeah. Road is, it's just Bartlett Road is not. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, an ideal world, I would love to push all of this traffic uh, down Stearns or, or even uh, 225 and to 59 at least, that would even help instead of, instead of using these cut throughs like Naperville Road. Um, the 25 is in a truck road. I know, right. Yeah. They're, they're, with, they're probably within the same distance as uh, Naperville Road is though, with the, within those point. guidelines. Good point. Well, I'm, wonder, I'm wondering, when they do the improvements on West Bartlett Road at 59, if that's going to divert any traffic uh, off of uh, Naperville Road, you know, if they would come back eastbound on the West Bartlett Road and, and then uh, make the left-hand turn or right-hand turn on 59. Yeah. The only way, the only other thing that, that I, that's the way I would go. But if you're headed westbound, then I would still stay on Naperville Road and go all the way to 20 and then head west. So. Yeah. I'll, I'll just add one thing to this because I'm going to probably be in uh, uh, several of these meetings and I'm, I'm assuming that uh, some other trustees would want to be in them as well. But I'm also going to add just using some diplomacy with some of these companies that are in Brewster Creek because all they have to do, especially the ones that have um, hired um, drivers, the contracted drivers are a little bit harder to, to manage. But if you have your own hired drivers and you're being a good neighbor uh, with the area, and it's only an extra three minutes to, to go up to 59 instead of cutting through Naperville. Um, we, I would suggest that we as a, a governing body really try to push the good neighbor diplomacy type thing with some of these companies as well. I think you can get, you can get some, um, some, a little bit of relief that way. Yeah. Makes sense. Yep. I agree. Okay. All right, All right, staff got what they need uh, moving forward. We're going to put some price tags on these things and and um, try to get a meeting sooner rather than later with um, Kevin Morrison and, and some of the other people from Cook County. And I would bring in any other parties that are along uh, Bartlett Road. So everybody's in that meeting and they're all um, understanding what our potential, what our objectives are. And our, our primary objectives are to move some of this traffic down to Stearns to move to move a lot of this traffic uh, off of Naperville Road and and try to um, improve the safety of Naperville Road as well and potentially um, you know get some of these pedestrian or the pedestrian walkways um, connected yes sir all right okay all right thanks everyone I appreciate your input thank you thank you thank you Thank, Thank you, everybody. Cindy Thank you. and Tim. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice speaking to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just before we move on, I think it looks like there's a chat. I'm not sure how we need to record that. Paula, do I need to do something? Um, you, if you click on the chat. Okay, do you want to you can you can read that? Okay. Um, if you want to. All right. Um, here, I got it. I you want to just up. read it? Sure, I can read it. Um, so it says, this is Steve Koffenbarger of Enterprise Foster Avenue in Bartlett. Another piece of low-hanging fruit to discuss with Cook County Transportation staff is the potential to improve bike pedestrian access across the south leg of Naperville Road at West Bartlett Road. I believe the existing traffic signals at this location include pedestrian countdown signals. What I'm asking is that you consider pursuing improving the actual path 
in the southwest quadrant to extend a short distance to the actual intersection, a curb cut in the southwest and southeast quadrants, and the appropriate road rate, roadway striping. Thank you for your consideration of the small price tag improvement recommendation. All right. Thank you, Mr. Koffenbarger. All right. Our next item on our list is we have um, a beta application from O'Hare's Pub and Restaurant. And I don't think it's a secret to any of us that uh, anyone that uh, O'Hare's is moving to the streets of Bartlett. Um, the new location is being built in tandem with Midway Lanes Bowling Alley and will be the food service provider for that business. Um, they have been in the village since 2013 and this will be their third location. And they, uh, the current expansion requires a complete build out of a portion of the long vacant former grocery store space in the streets of Bartlett. Uh, so the applicant details cost totaling over $276,000. Um, and since the architectural fees are not considered beta eligible, the staff values the physical improvements of the space at $270,000 and recommends a grant of the maximum amount for beta of $50,000. So this was at the Economic Development Commission on January 11th and passed through them with unanimous recommendation uh, to go in front of us. Are there any questions, any discussion we'd like to have? No, trustee, I have no questions and uh, I would be in favor of this, uh, moving this to the village board for final vote. Okay. And just, I like to see if Peggy was on, if there's anything she wanted to add. Hello, everybody. Um, Peggy and Bill are both here on um, uh, the Zoom meeting. So if you have any questions for us, we're happy to answer them. Um, other than that, we are incredibly excited to open this new venue. And we're incredibly excited to have you open the new venue. So Godspeed is what we have to say to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And cooperation from our state health department. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Right. Peggy and Bill, this is uh, Trustee Danny. I want to wish you the best of luck and we'll support you any way we can. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, then uh, we'll move this to the village board meeting for a final vote. Very good. Good. Thank you. And that's what we have for economic development. I think you have one more, don't you? I think it's not, not under mine. Uh, oh, man. It's building oh, and zoning. Is... Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thank you so much, Chairman Gansey. Um, next item on our agenda this evening is under building and zoning, Chairman Ranke. Thank you, Mr. President. We have one item tonight, the Puckett Reserve uh, Concept Plan Review. Uh, the petitioner is requesting a concept plan review for medium density development on a, an approximately 15 acre parcel located on the east side of Naperville Road, uh, which uh, frankly was the subject of a great deal of discussion already tonight. Uh, it's a roughly 146 apartments divided into four uh, two-story buildings. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to staff for any further uh, comment they'd like to add. Uh, thank you, Trustee Branke. So I've got the location map up on the screen. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So as Trustee Branke said, this is a medium density development proposed on the east side of Naperville for 146 apartments. Um, it would be um, contained within four two-story buildings. Each building would have a mix of studios, one bedroom, two, and three bedroom units. Um, they are also proposing at this location, the Northwest corner, a 10,000 square foot building proposed um, for a micro office event rentals for the residents use. And they're also identifying two courtyard areas and outdoor amenity areas, which may be, um, one of them might contain a swimming pool area. Um, the, you'll see that the concept plan proposes a full access curb cut off of Naperville Road. This would be a public street. Um, yes, Naperville is under the jurisdiction of Cook County. And the road would then connect north to Tamarack Drive 
um, providing a second point of ingress and egress for this development. They're also proposing a 10 foot wide public bike path along the east side of Naperville that will connect the existing paths to the north and south. And they're also proposing a private five foot wide um, trail system or what they're calling a runner's path around the perimeter of the property. And then that will come back and connect to the bike path. So they would be requesting at the time of a full application uh, submittal to annex this property and then to rezone it to the SR6 PUD, uh, multifamily medium density zoning district, which allows for up to 14 dwelling units an acre. Mm -hmm. The comprehensive plan designates this property as attached residential low density, five to eight dwelling units per net acre. Um, the concept plan before you tonight identifies a net density of 11.6 dwelling units an acre. Uh, the zoning ordinance requires a total of 309 parking spaces for this development, and they have provided 310 spaces. A variation would be required to allow parking within the required 40 foot perimeter um, along the north and south property lines. And the petitioner is proposing to install decorative walls along the north and south property lines to screen uh, the headlights from the surrounding properties. The development also identifies a park site shown on the east end of the property adjacent to the required um, stormwater detention area. And with that, um, I believe the petitioner and some family members are on the Zoom call and they do have a PowerPoint presentation that they would like to um, show you uh, some of their product types. Well, they were on the call, they all dropped off. Oh, you're oh. kidding. No, they, <laughs> at one right. time there was quite a few. In, in the absence, let's go ahead uh, uh, and take a look at the PowerPoint. Uh, please. Okay, that, yeah, now I'm curious. I want to see. It. Okay. Well, this looks like some of the data. Sure, you can narrate for us. Oh, I, I don't know. I'm really surprised they're not here. He really. They're okay, they're on. Okay. Kevin Lang. Kenny. Hi, this is Kenny. Can you guys hear me? Yes. 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 Oh, hey. Sorry. Um, we're, we're just trying to figure out the system. It's a total new to us. Um, can we just wait one second so Kevin can try and figure this out as well? Sure. Uh, Dean, are you on? Dean is a half owner of the property. Dean, Dean are you on? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? There we go. Yeah. Hey, Kevin, are you on? What the hell is going on? You're oh. on. Hello? Oh. We hear you, Kevin. Yeah. Oh. Careful what you say. What, what did I say there? I mean, that was my son. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, sorry about that, you guys. I didn't know what was going on there. I may have thrown out a four-letter word. My apologies. Uh, well, thank you guys very much for having us. I, we do have uh, a lot of family members on the phone right now, and uh, a couple of people are architects from Davis Design uh, based out of Tempe, but also or, uh, has an office in Chicago. Um, we did put together uh, a very, in our opinion, uh, pretty deck for you guys. And the reason why is because we really wanted you guys to understand the flavor, the theme of what this development is. And I'll start kind of from the beginning and I'm going to try not to ramble on, but there's a lot to this that is, that is very close to the family. I'm the grandson of Elmer Puckett. My brother, Kenny, who was just talking is my twin brother. My mother who's on the line as well, Linda Puckett and my uncle Dean Puckett. Um, long story short, I, I live in Phoenix, but I was pretty much raised in the summers and in the, uh, the uh, holidays at this, on this 15 acres with my grandpa and my family. Um, it means a lot to us. Uh, we, we had a lot of fun there and we didn't wanna just sell property to anybody. Uh, my grandfather, Elmer, had a lot of offers and, he, and many of the reasons why is because he just didn't wanna sell the property to 
some unknown developer or someone who would come in and build a bunch of houses or apartment units or anything that would just be gaudy and leave the land in, um, you know, with a tainted name attached to it. So we, about a year and a half ago, we, we brought this to a couple of developers, uh, one local developer that Roberta is familiar with. And you know what, we, 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 we entrusted them and they, they did not perform, put it nicely. So we took things into our own hands and we brought on a very, very good architectural firm, Davis, uh, who Taylor and Mike are both on right now from Davis. Um, I've known these guys for a long time. Mike Davis, the owner, was in my wedding. And I tell you that because this is a very, very tight-knit, close uh, team. And you don't see that very often in, in real estate development. And I've been doing this for about 20 years now. And uh, my brother, Kenny, has been in design for 20 plus years. Um, so we took this into our own hands. And we, 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 we asked ourselves, what does the next gen, what, did, what do the generations now want and the next generations? And what do they need? And a lot of the arrows were pointing in the direction of what's called, we didn't even really know what we were designing in terms of the product type until somebody told us recently. But this, these aren't apartments. This is called Horizontal Big House. And it's a very, very nice, generous blend of apartments, townhomes, and single family. And there's a lot of, uh, you probably going to ask me how it differentiates from apartments, and I can tell you all the reasons. But when we flip through this deck, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to show you. We, we designed this campus to, uh, to attract and retain residents. We've noticed over so many years that uh, because of some of the lack of new development in Bartlett, that a lot of prospective residents have been moving to South Elgin with some of the newer product type and then some surrounding sub market like Schaumburg and Hoffman Estates, even Elgin. So we, we looked at the market demand and really vetted what these people wanted and what they need. And ironically, we started designing this before COVID hit, but we knew that we had to create a community, a campus, um, and something that would live on for a long, long time. Uh, this is not a development that we are going to put up a bunch of, you know, 146 units and just move on. No, this is, this is something that's near and dear that's going to be in our heritage. Uh, but we wanted to develop a community for work, live, and play. And you can see that by the micro office and the multi-tenant, I'm sorry, the multi-purpose building that's in the front that's specific to the tenants, not, not the general public. It's, a, it's an incredible amenity to have on campus that we have seen all over the place, um, especially here in Phoenix and uh, some other bigger uh, metropolitan areas, but then also suburbs. This, this acts an ability to keep the residents there and to lower, I mean, we're actually following a very tough topic with uh, traffic, but um, this actually um, keeps tenants and the residents there instead of having to uh, take so many trips per day to uh, go to their office, go to the, the gym, the theater. We have all that stuff on site. So, um, you know, we, I know that traffic studies will need to be performed and people are worried about the traffic on Naperville Road. Kenny and I, you know, and, and my mom and Dean, same deal. we see the big trucks driving up and down all the time. Um, and we have to turn into, uh, into our, uh, our land. So we fully understand, you know, the headache that, that, you know, that's there, but with our design, it's going to limit the amount of traffic. So, um, but we wanted to create a, a sanctuary type environment, you know, an area, a place where people can, can, can drive into and just leave the hustle and bustle of the world. Um, and we also wanted to bring elements of, let's say downtown Chicago, other areas into this campus as well, which, the, the right-of-ways and the road, um, when you, we go through the deck, you'll see, really speak to that. So we came up with what's called a horizontal big house design, but it has a very a southwestern meets modern prairie feel. And pretty much spending a quarter of our life out there, we know that our, our mom and our immediate family and their friends, they're in love with Phoenix. They're in love with Arizona, Sedona. And, um, and I know there, there's this two degrees of separation between Arizona and Illinois. I mean, my, my wife's family lives out there. I mean, it's everybody I know seems to be from the greater Chicago area. So we, we, we took that, um, 
we, we kept that in mind while we were designing it. So, Roberta, if you want to flip through the deck, we can kind of touch on some of this stuff. And I'll, I'll turn it over to Kenny um, to go through some of the design elements, interior and exterior. But I, I want to touch on something really quick. What COVID has done to everybody is, is unprecedented. So no, nobody knew what was coming, but it has changed life for everybody. Um, <laughs> it's, it's tough to talk about because I know so many people who suffered through this. But what we did is actually something that we weren't expecting, and that is to help people who are, are selling their homes, sell their homes, and put the, the equity into their savings account, or leave Chicago, which they are in droves, and go into the suburbs, working virtually, uh, ha but even working virtually, having to leave their family just to keep their sanity. So I, I know this because I have three kids under five, and uh, I do have a home office as well. So we, the micro office there does act as that, um, that amenity and uh, an, an, es an escape for people to still stay on campus, but have their own office. And so that's the micro office element. And then the outdoors. Well, let me, let me interrupt you there because it, it, you know, at this point and at this point of the evening and, you know, we're at the concept plan phase, perhaps we could just kind of, yeah, like uh, I think advance the slide and kind of just go over the general concept and yes. we'll give you some general feedback and, and, you know, we'll come by and be able to look at, at more of the, the specific details at a, at a later date when it's, when it's uh, appropriate. Sure. Thanks. So, um, Taylor and Mike, if you guys are on, you can jump in any time. But this is uh, one of the elevations of Modern Prairie that we chose. We came up with four concept elevations. And this one, I think, spoke to all of us the most. Um, you know, even I think Roberta liked the, this one out of all four. So, uh, Taylor, you want to jump in and just kind of explain how you guys came up with this design and what just the thoughts that went into it? Um, it can, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't know how much uh, I can really add. I think you, you honestly covered it pretty well. Like you said, we, we talked about some combination of, of prairie, some, but I mean, it's still kind of keeping in mind, you know, where we are, but like you said, south, southwestern aspects, um, you know, nothing, nothing that I think would um, conflict or, or, or clash with, you know, what's common in the area. I think it's all very contextual, but, but still, you know, looks new and fresh. So. Yeah. And I think you've also embraced a lot of, with the interior shots that you guys are looking at now, um, you embrace a lot of the clean lines, uh, simple materials, things that will really create a space and create a, a structure that lasts, that, that just stands the test of time. Um, and, and these will fit very well within the surrounding neighborhoods uh, and, the, and the district at large. And I think it'd be a, a huge compliment. So. Yeah, it's, it's, guys, this is, uh, Kenny, I'll just jump in real fast too as we're kind of skimming through the slides. But um, it, I think it's really important for everyone to understand too, just to you know emphasize what Kevin was saying earlier is that our family's been here since 1961. And we probably know this, this property and the surrounding land better than anybody, uh, which obviously makes its way into our design. And so when we're designing this, it's not because of anything other than the fact that we want to protect, um, you know, our roots and our history and the mature landscaping, the, the lush surroundings, all of those things that we know that the neighbors really love about the property when they drive by or if they're living, you know, adjacent to us. They get to look out and see, you know, the beautiful land. So we kept all of those things in mind. Um, you know, the other, it's not even a challenge. The other thing that we wanted to make sure that we hit on was, you know, welcoming something that, you know, is an indoor-outdoor feel, which is the reason why we use some natural or earthy materials. And we kept the color palette uh, 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 nice and clean. And, and, and to that earlier point, nice straight lines. Uh, we want it to be inviting for everybody. So we're not just inviting, you know, people from downtown. We're inviting people from all over Bartlett, uh, the surrounding towns like St. Charles, Brownburg, um, but also really want to retain the uh, the residents in, in Bartlett too. So um, we, we branded this specific to the family, uh, which is Puckett, and so we're calling it Puckett Reserve. We kept the branding really simple and clean, but generally speaking, overall, this this design and this development 
We want it to blend in with our existing property and we don't want it to be an eyesore to anybody. We want it to be welcoming. Uh, so keep in mind everybody that, you know, we've been here since 1961. And again, we know this property better than anyone and we're going to do our best to protect it and design the best thing that we can. All right. Well, thank you very much, yeah. sir. I, I think uh, it looks fabulous. I, I would just add, uh, you had mentioned that there's some townhouses and some rental or leases or what, what I didn't quite catch that. Uh, are you talking about this project specifically or another yeah, one? Yeah, and this project, is this all rental properties? This, this is all rental properties, yeah. So okay. this, uh, it's called Big House. If you guys wanted to uh, Google it, uh, just Google Big House. It's actually in a very, very high demand product type right now. Yeah, yeah. my, my niece lives in one in Nashville and um, it's fantastic. It looks exactly like this type of a setting and she loves it. So I think it's a fantastic concept. I don't think that I would have an issue with it at all, the way it's set up. The biggest takeaway for a big house concept is, is just knowing that there's a big emphasis on uh, acre, like land acreage and, uh, and, and greenery. So um, that again is just, you know, we started designing this without the big house in mind. It just happened to become that uh, because of what we stand by and what we believe to protect the property. But overall, as a concept, just as a, as a definition of what the development is, that being big house, uh, we're, we're sort of standing by exactly what, uh, what that term means, uh, land acreage and, and lush green uh, landscaping. Yeah, looks beautiful. Um, yep. This is uh, Trustee Sawanski. Do you have a, some type of idea of what the, the rental costs would be for these units? We do. Um, we're still running some studies on that, but it, we have to engage a general contractor to give us a, you know, a good idea of what the overall cost is going to be. We, we do have an idea. So staying with, within market, um, there's a couple of products in St. Charles and uh, in downtown Elgin. So the one bedroom we feel is going to be anywhere from 1,400 to 1,600. Uh, a two bedroom is going to be, I'm looking at my notes, anywhere from 2,200 to 3,000. And a three bedroom, anywhere from 2,800 to 4,000 a month. A 4,000 is basically, there's only one or two of those. Sure. And so just, and yeah, if you guys want to, if you want to go just past these slides right here and jump into what we designed for the apartment, you can get an idea of what the three bedroom would look like. Um, it's like the, the, towards the uh, beginning of the deck. Yeah. So, so keep, keep uh, scrolling there if you can. Uh, keep going. Yeah, so this slide is a little, well, okay. Yeah, that, that's a good slide. The one just before, for some reason, isn't coming through clear on our end, but uh, these are generally like 1,500 square feet. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's an open, airy concept. And for the way that Davis designed uh, through their elevations that we were looking at before, you know, there's a lot of windows in the space and it, it's super welcoming to the outdoors. Uh, so we wanted to blend the inside with the outside as best as possible and keep the color just super neutral. Um, and, and contemporary. And there, there's a hit of some Southwestern, um, you know, West Coast, but it's also just so general across the board for really any location. Um, and those trees and everything that you see in the background, those are, you know, we use Google Earth images and we try to capture some of the property that we would like to uh, salvage. But um, yeah, so we're, we kind of think these are gonna have this really awesome tree house uh, vibe. You know, especially if you're on the second floor uh, where you have these corner windows and this nice little banquette seating uh, in the living room space here with a, a fireplace, uh, a mantle, and then just really high ceilings. So we're looking at ceilings that are probably something around like uh, 12, in some cases, maybe higher, 13 or 14 feet, which we'd have to play with. But this one right here, I believe, is around 11 or 12 feet high. So it's a pitched roof. It's got really awesome beams. Um, and as you go, if you, if you slide through this deck a little further, it, you know, you'll see that's our master bedroom, which is nice and big. And it has a, a walk-in closet, the master bedroom. And again, the, uh, the vaulted ceilings are a nice around 12 feet high. Um, you know, so that's our, well, this is our amenities building. If you want to spend some time on this, this is, uh, this started out as 20,000 square feet and we will go down to 10,000 square feet. And the major categories or, or rooms in this place are going to be the lobby, which is at the bottom left of that uh, site plan. And then that middle area, the largest, is our workspace. 
will have offices around the perimeter and COVID friendly, socially distant workstations in the center. So you can see there's a, there's a lot of space in here. Um, that middle room there is another point of entry, which we're calling uh, our cyber cafe or bar kitchenette. And that's a place where, you know, anyone can go and get a drink, a coffee, a beer, watch some TV. It's, it's again, it's open and airy. That room would have a skylight. Uh, that bottom left lobby again is our other point of entry. That room would have a skylight as well. And as it stands now, that's, uh, that's a living tree in the center. Uh, that's sort of symbolic to our family, especially our grandparents, uh, Gladys and, and Elmer Puckett, the original owners of the land. This would also be the area where the administration office would be, uh, which are those two offices on the bottom left of that room. And then there's a bathroom, uh, which is at the top right of that room. And then right next to it is a private, uh, uh, it's not PO box. It'd be a private boxes, I guess, for residents for Amazon. Yeah. yeah, that area right there. So the the the, the, so, the cool so, thing, is like, and I'll touch on just one more and one more thing. What we bring the outside world to the to this campus, and when Kenny said COVID friendly, um, what we're trying to do, what we'd like to do, is uh, uh, design a uh, variable air volume system that mm -hmm. has HEPA filters built into it, so it's circulating and cleaning the air. Uh, multiple times a minute as opposed to multiple times every 10 minutes. So people are, people are, you know, they, their, their way of life has changed and they don't necessarily want to go to the grocery store all the time. Things are being delivered and that's also going to cut down on the traffic as well um, as, as Amazon prime is delivering more groceries and boxes and everything. So we know that the traffic uh, is, is not going to be as bad as people might think because we're delivering something like what you see in this multi-purpose building is we're trying to keep people there and comfortable. So the, the, um, the multi-purpose building, um, which is, looks beautiful. It, it looks almost like the concept of the WeWork facilities where, you know, people can, can mm -hmm. go in, but, but are the, are those workstations, is all of that included in the rent or is that going to be a separate cost? They're, they can pay for the uh, the private offices if they want to. Um, the conference rooms are for everybody to use. They just have to sign up, and that'll be done through an, uh, an electronic system. Okay. But people can go in there. Families can go in there with their kids and hang out and watch uh, watch one of the large TVs in the theater room. Um, the the fitness center is everything is free other than the private offices. The private, okay. It has to be personal to the to people who are going to lease that space. Sure. Um, but everything is open to the residents. Well, have, thank uh, you. Thank is there like, any uh, further um, input from the committee? Yeah, I I'd, have a like, I'd, I'd like to address the board, if I may. Uh, this is Trustee Danny. Over the years, I've looked at many, many projects, and uh, I've been at uh, some of that I come through. But I have to tell you, when I first looked at this, I thought it was one of the most attractive projects that I've seen in all the years that I've been part of the uh, village. And I, w I hope that uh, this only comes to uh, fruition. So thanks for taking the effort, the explanation, and the walkthrough that you gave us this evening. But again, yeah. I have to say, this is one of the most attractive projects that I've, I've seen in Thank all you. my years. Thank you. We, uh, Thank you a lot. We put a lot of heart and soul into this, and we, we truly do hope that it, it does come to fruition, too. We'll see to it that it does, given your approval. But thank you so much. That was, that was thank you. That was great. Kevin, can Very nice. You, can you I have a couple. I have a couple questions. This is uh, Trustee Hopkins. Um, what material did you plan on using on the exterior of the buildings? Taylor, you want to take that one? Oh, sure, I can. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I was just looking back. I, it's, it's a little tricky because we've only shown um, one of several options that we looked at. Um, but, you know, like Kevin mentioned earlier, um, we're trying to use some instances of, of more earthy materials. So, so that's some wood or wood look siding. Um, and I, and we're, we're using some, some brick there. Um, but, you know, we, we're still looking at, at, at options for different things. I think okay. generally it'll be some combination of that though. All right. 
Rusty Hopkins, we're not going to go with the chipper chicken at all. This is, uh, you know, this is what you see is, is what we're aiming for, um, given material costs and labor costs. So okay. but we're going to go for this as close as we possibly can. Okay. I just, I want to be clear. I really like the design. I like that you've, you know, you guys have been part of Bartlett for a while. Um, so I just want to throw that question out there and to make sure once you do start doing some design work, you don't cut corners and you make it um, uh, good materials to use that. Um, the other question is, I know uh, if you've listened earlier in the meeting, we uh, talked about some traffic concerns on Naperville Road and a possible roundabout um, on Naperville Road. Uh, would you guys be willing to contribute any um, funds for any roadway improvements or bike paths in that area? Yeah, I think we actually included that in the pro forma and okay. right up I mean, contiguous to the property. And you know what, you bring up a, a good point, Trustee Hopkins. I would actually, if you guys haven't done so already, look into the Industrial Development Authority bonds. Um, I know they have them out there in, in Illinois. I've dealt with the IBA on a state, local, and federal basis for probably five, five states. You guys might be able to get your hands on some infrastructure money from the IDA. So I would, I highly recommend that. Uh, okay. That's totally off topic, but I was listening to the conversation. But uh, yeah, we, we do plan on uh, helping out the, the expansion and, and the, and the, uh, the right of way there that's contiguous to our property. All right, thank you. And then I have a quick question for uh, Roberta Grill. Um, will this development, will they have to get the uh, approval of the homeowners associations to the north and the south to connect into their subdivisions? They do not. Okay. The right of way for Tamarack Drive actually abuts the property line. Okay. And it was always envisioned for um, any development on this property that they would connect with the public street. All right. Thank you, Roberta. I appreciate that. Uh, excuse That's me. All I have. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Dean. Oh, uh, yeah. I I just wanted to say I, I I'm really impressed with. Every, I'm so happy that everybody loves this design and it's on the board. Um, I've lived here. I'm 53. I've lived here my entire life. I ran our business with my dad. We do classic cars. We've, we've sold a lot of cars to the community and people in the area. And my dad was very well known. Um, one of his best friends was police chief, or not police chief, I'm sorry, fire chief Elmer Heck, which also spent a lot of time on our property with us. Um, and the, I'm sorry, I forget your name, but you, you were concerned about like cutting corners later and stuff. That's, that's one of my main things is um, why we wanted to do this ourselves. I had so many offers from developers and I seen their products. It, it was totally exactly opposite of what we did if we want on this property. Um, it's, I, well, 15 acres and I take care of it by myself. <laughs> so I mean, I, I know every inch of this property. I love it. It's going to be very sad to leave, but it's just, you know, unpractical. The taxes, Cook County taxes, um, you know, the maintenance, the upkeep by myself. And, but at the same time, I don't want to just sell to one of these big box corporations or, you know, developers, because I know the product they build. I know two or three years after they build it, it looks run down already. I want something that people drive by and, and remember my dad and something that like we really worked on was pushing it back, surrounding it with nature, keeping the same aspect that we've lived and enjoyed our whole life here. And, you know, part of nature and everything. Uh, my mother is Native American, full-blooded. The property and the nature aspect was, I mean, that's all she wanted. And I really hate to see something come in that's not, and that, you know, doesn't honor their respect and what they would want. And this is very, I mean, it, 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 I'm getting a little emotional, I'm sorry. Um, well, but I really want something to improve Bartlett, that something that Bartlett doesn't have something that'll draw people um, and keep people here. 
and be a real family centric place um, because that's all we've ever been. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so, yeah, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate that you guys um, enjoy our design and stuff. I really hope we can work with you with this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are there any other members of the committee that like to chime in? Cause I'd like to give some feedback as well. Nope. I think we're good. Okay. Well, my, my feedback, uh, my feedback is I agree. I think this is very attractive. Uh, I wish this was on Lake street. I think Lake street could use some of this product. Um, I think that the density may be an issue, particularly with the neighbors. Uh, I think uh, tree preservation, I heard you talk about that. That's fantastic. I'm glad to see that. I think that's going to be an issue with neighbors. And, you know, I, I hear what you're saying about traffic. Um, I think the traffic is going to be an issue with the neighbors as well. And uh, those are all things that I'm going to be watching closely. If, if you could lower the density, that's certainly something that I would appreciate. Um, Otherwise, uh, those are those are my comments. And unless any other member of the board has anything they'd like to say, I, I think it's uh, it's time that we uh, we bring this to a close. I agree. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, uh, thank Mr. You. President. That's all we have for planning and zoning tonight. Thank you, Chairman Rankin. I just want to thank the whole family for being on tonight, and 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 we can tell that you're very proud of this product that you put together. And we, I think that that it's a very very um, fantastic concept. So thank you all for being on, and sharing your a bit of your family history and a bit of your passion for making this a, a, a vital um, um, part of Bartlett's history or, or history and future. So thank you so much, everyone. And um, we will push this out until we get here back from Roberta after discussions with the family. So with that being said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Danny, second by Trustee Carbonaro. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Carbonaro? Yes. Danny? Yes. Gansey? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Suwanski? Yes. We are adjourned. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone.